dignitaries on the dais, of the dais. Yesterday we discussed a lot about the treatment technologies for the wastewater. Today I will discuss how that wastewater can be used for agriculture. Can we make it smart wa water by uh, adding some kind, uh, low kind interventions? That's why I, I have kept the topic of my talk is management and reuse of urban effluents in agriculture. Next, please. Uh, they, that has been discussed. So in, in case of the water scarcity, uh, <clears throat> there is a need to utilize marginal quality waters, including urban effluents for irrigation. But before making it a part of the water use planning, we need to know the volume of the wastewater generated and the most importantly, the quality of the wastewater which is available for irrigation. Next, please. This, this has been discussed. Next, please. Uh, this is the quality of the water which, has been, which is being used for irrigation. It is containing a lot of the uh, BOD, COD, pathogens, heavy metals. And mainly it's a, it's a liquid, 99% uh, is water, o only 1% is solid. And out of that 1%, 40 to 50% is organics. Rest is inert. Next, please. Uh, because of the wastewater use or the sanitation, uh, we are seeing that more than 2.4 million deaths are uh, caused by, uh, by uh, because of the wastewater use or poor sanitation over the world. Similarly, about 70 million years of the disability or existed life years are lost because of the poor sanitation or uh, uh, wastewater use. And at the same time, that wastewater, uncontrolled, unregulated use of wastewater uh, pollutes our natural resources, soil or groundwater uh, uh, or surface water in irrever uh, irreversible manner, which cannot be reclaimed. Next, please. Uh, here we are seeing that the metal contamination uh, in the vegetables or in the river water that is uh, many, many folds times than the permissible lim limit. Next, please. Uh, same way that if the such water is uh, are being used on the soil, what happens? That there is the buildup of the uh, metals in the soil. And once the metals are uh, accumulated in the soil, they, they ca that cannot be reclaimed. That, that soil cannot be remediated. At the same time, but the long-term use of the wastewater, it leads to build up the soil content, then improve in, in the organic carbon improvement in the available nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, potassium contents. And the, here the most important thing is that sewage irrigation is regulated by the amount of nitrogen present in uh, in it and also by the crop water requirement. Next, please. Here, uh, apart from that uh, soil water plant, even that uh, uh, heavy metals have been gone to the milk. Here it is the case from the Musi River of Hyderabad. That animals fed on the fodder, which were uh, which was being irrigated by the wastewater, and then it that we are seeing here many many folds times of the heavy metals in even in the milk which we are consuming. Uh, but uh, yeah, just in the morning session, we were uh, seeing that uh, metal accumulation. We are finding the metal accumulation in the vegetable or in, in different crops irrigated with wastewater. But the impact on the growth or uh, economic yield are sparsely uh, reported. Next, please. Uh, this is the potential. We, we are working on the wastewater use since last 20 years. This is that uh, in India that about, uh, we have estimated about 2 million hectares of the land can be irrigated by using this wastewater. 4 million tons of the nutrient can be generated. That is 13% of the fertilizer nutrient being supplied. Then apart from that, we can uh, provide 280, 280 million men days of the labor. And we, we, we can reduce the greenhouse gas emission by 74 million uh, megagram carbon dioxide equivalent per year. Next, please. Next. Uh, we conducted one experiment. Uh, just uh, the, in the morning session, Mr. N uh, Nathin Basi was discussing about that uh, cropping uh, crops. But which cropping system, whether it should be the food grains, if whether it should be the agroforestry, whether it should be the fo fodder or vegetables, and how much of the nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium can be saved. It is very easy to say that uh, uh, wastewater use uh, 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 results in the saving of the fertilizer. How much fertilizer? 
in which cropping system? So we uh, conducted this experiment for eight years and we found that 14 to 28 uh, percent of the improvement in the crop productivity, 60, 67, 20 and 20, uh, 80 percent of the NP can be uh, saved in the food, uh, food grain, agroforestry, fodder production, uh, production system and vegetable process, uh, production system uh, respectively. Uh, then here we are seeing that the paddy wheat equivalent yield. Here the paddy wheat equivalent yield was maximum in case the vegetable production system. That is why the farmer are choosing vegetable in the peri-urban agriculture. This is the region. Next. Here the income, uh, uh, income obtained from the uh, one case is irrigated by the groundwater, another is with the wastewater. Here that uh, income from the wastewater irrigate, ir irrigated agriculture is much more than the groundwater irrigated one. Next, please. Next. Just one minute. Uh, again, we conducted one experiment for five years uh, using the treated, that water has been treated by the uh, constructed wetland uh, having the vertical flow. And here we are seeing that uh, apart from the metals, we can reduce the pathogen load by the 68 to 73%. Apart from the pathogen, because uh, uh, there is the another problem that is average da daily physiological weight loss or average daily decay loss because of the wastewater use in different crops. Next, please. Then coming to the uh, final aspect, the strategies. F uh, the first strategy is the conjunctive use of the ground and wastewater. If they are mixed together in the cycling mode, then we can reduce the metal load as well as the pathogen load. Similarly, the cutting of the uh, say sorghum. If we cut the sorghum uh, fodder crop 10 centimeter above the crop, uh, uh, above the surface, we can reduce the MPN number to the dramatically. Uh, it, has, it has just come to the zero. Next, please. Similarly, low cost technologies. Like uh, we, we, see, we have seen that the pathogens are, are exogenous. Uh, if we plant the crop on the raised bed, we can reduce the pathogen load. It has been observed. Similarly, washing. If we wash that uh, rich gourd uh, uh, with the fresh water, say three, uh, three washings, then fecal coliform has been brought to the level of less than two. Similarly, that in case of cabbage, if we, remo uh, we have removed two le outer leaves of the cabbage and you see uh, that fecal coliform uh, load has been reduced to uh, less than two. Next, please. Next, now, uh, we are, now the people are talking that wastewater has to be disposed of uh, in the landscape or the or the f uh, forestry plantation, uh, at any cost, it should not be used in the food crops. Then the question comes: What should be the loading rate? If the loading rate is very high, then it will that uh, the, the pollutants will move to the groundwater and that will that will be polluted. So we conducted uh, eight, eight eight year uh, study and we found that the uh, that eucalyptus plantation are the potential site for the wastewater disposal and the rate of disposal is was found to be 1.5 folds than the annual crop. Next please. Another strategies can be the cultivation of the non-edible crops. Cultivation of the aromatic plants like uh, lemongrass. Uh, we found that the, uh, with the use of the wastewater uh, for irrigation it resulted in the increase in the herbage yield but, uh, the, but the no metal were found in the essential oil part. Similar that uh, Floriculture, like the gladiolus, cryogenthium, marigold, this, this can be another alternative. Next, please. Uh, then uh, cultivation of the turf grass, making use of the uh, jute base so that it can be rolled and it can be transported to the desired place. Uh, next, please. Use of the bio adjustments. It helped uh, to remove the 60 to 80 percent of the metals. Next, please. Use of the biochar again. It uh, uh, we are we were able to remove 88 percent of nickel, 62 percent of the uh, chromium by using the biochar. Same thing was happened with the uh, by using the eggshell. Next, please. Uh, again, the vermiculite sandwich base system can be used. Next, please. Next. Uh, the, the, uh, this has been discussed in the morning session, so I will not discuss. Next, please. Uh, this is another important aspect. Uh, constructed wetland or the decentralized wa wastewater treatment system because the most of the sewage treatment plants are localized in the big cities or metros, but there is no t 
treatment technology for the small cities or scattered community. So this is that uh, uh, the by using the constructed wetland, uh, we can overcome the path that uh, BOD, COD, and uh, organic load. Uh, heat has just 1% energy requirement, zero chemical application, zero sludge generation, uh, 50 to 65% uh, uh, reduced cost. Uh, next, please. Uh, next. Uh, these are some industry st standards. Next, please. Uh, so just last slide. Uh, here, uh, here I want to emphasize on the constraint, uh, strengthening of the sewage farms. We should some allocate some so uh, some land around the sewage treatment plant, and we should ask the farmer to take non-edible crops. By lo uh, in that way, the farmers will be losing the uh, choice of the crop. That has to be compensated by strengthening of the sewage farm. We can reduce the. Uh, that uh, that uh, 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 polluted metals or the or the or the uh, vegetables contaminated with the sewage water. Then treatment at source, uh, polluter pays uh, uh, principle. Others I have discussed. Thank you very much.